السلام عليكم I'm Professor Dr. Haider Jawad Mubarak This is the second lecture in uh, the curriculum of embryology for the second class College of Medicine and Nahran University The first lecture was considering embryology of the muscular system and uh, an introduction to somatogenesis well, This lecture will be about uh, embryology of the skeletal system. We will start uh, first with the embryology of the skull or the development of the skull. Uh, generally, in order to describe the embryology of the skull, we may divide the skull into two parts. Bones of the face, development of bones of the face, which is called viscerocranium. Uh, this is the first part and the second part is bone uh, containing the brain which is the br bones of the brain box which is called neurocranium so developmentally the skull could be divided into two parts bone of the face which are uh, viscerocranium and bone of the uh, brain box neurocranium and we will start with the bones of the uh, brain box the neurocranium also the brain box itself, in order to be described in terms of embryological development, we can define the brain box, the neurocranium, developmentally into two regions. <coughs> First, the cranial vault, uh, and second is the base of the skull. And you know the base of the skull, uh, from above it forms the base of the skull, while below, uh, from below it forms the base of the skull or from above it forms the cranial cavity or cranial fossa. So we will discuss the neurocranium in uh, two parts developmentally, the uh, brain cup, first part of the neurocranium, and base of the skull, the second part of the neurocranium. The brain cup is formed by the so-called membranous ossification. So the development of the brain cup is from the membranous portion of the uh, neurocranium. Here, the mesenchymal tissue will show centers of ossification for each of the bones of the cranial valve of the brain cup. For example, there will be center for ossification of the frontal bone, center for ossification of the parietal bone, and center for ossification of the occipital bone. And from these ossification centers, many bony spicules will grow uh, in forms of uh, 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 membranous pattern of ossification. Therefore, as you can see, when uh, each of these bones will develop, there will be a remaining connective tissue from the mesenchyme, from the original mesenchyme in between the bones. The connective tissue that remains between two bones uh, forms the so-called suture, which is a fibrous tissue. While the connective tissue remaining from the mesenchyme of the a brain cup from the cranial valve, uh, which is between more than two bones, is called fontanal. And therefore, we have anterior fontanal, posterior fontanel, and uh, two lateral fontanels, anterior lateral and posterior lateral fontanels. So, uh, the flat bones will form the, uh, by membranous ossification, and uh, uh, sutures and fontanels will be formed as connective tissue between the flat bones of the cranial valve. Actually, uh, the sutures and fontanelles, the connective tissue, are ha having um, an important uh, clinical significance. The clinical significance of the sutures and fontanelles is that when the head of the baby gets out of the birth canal during labor, uh, there will be overlap between the flat bones of the cranial valve uh, while the head is passing through the birth canal. And by that, there will be a decrease in the size of the skull by this overlap, which is called the molding of the head of the uh, baby, and thus the skull will become, in this region of the cranial valve, smaller in size to get easier from the birth canal. Even uh, after birth, the fontanelles have a clinical significance, the anterior fontanelle and posterior fontanelle and the two lateral fontanelles. The uh, fontanelles, which are in form of membrane between more than two bones, membrane of connective tissue, 
after birth would have another clinical significance for the doctor during examination of the baby, newborn baby after birth. Uh, one of these or some of these uh, clinical significance is that this membrane of the fontanel could be felt to indicate the intracranial pressure, the pressure inside the skull. For example, a baby having uh, diarrhea, losing much of a fluid, so he will have uh, uh, low intracranial pressure and thus when the doctor feels the anterior fontanel, uh, he will feel that the anterior fontanel is depressed. Normally, it is within le the level of the flat bones, but if it is depressed, thus this means that uh, the intracranial pressure is low due to dehydration, or uh, maybe there is a tumor inside the skull, brain tumor for the newborn, and thus you will find that uh, the tumor produces increased intra intracranial pressure, and therefore the fontanel will uh, bulge above the level of the surrounding flat bone. In addition to that, each of the fontanelles, the anterior, posterior, and the lateral fontanelles, uh, they will ossify later on during later childhood. The last of these fontanelles will, must be ossified in about uh, in a child of one and a half year old. And uh, therefore, if there will be a delay in ossification of the fontanelle, that means that uh, 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 there is a problem with ossification, for example, calcium deficiency or vitamin D deficiency or so on. So this is all about uh, the first part of the brain box, the neurocranium, which is the vault. The second part of the neurocranium, the brain box, is the base of the skull. And as we said, uh, the base of the skull, if you look at it from below, but if you look at it from above, it is the cranial cavity. So, uh, this part of the neurocranium is called chondrocranium because it is not formed of a membrane just like the brain cup, the cranial valve, but it is formed by uh, ossification of a precartilaginous model forming the bones of the base of the skull or the bones of the cranial cavity. And this cartilaginous model will ossify, and uh, so the second part of the neurocranium developmentally is described as the cartilaginous part or the chondrocranium. Here you can see that uh, this cartilaginous model sometimes in references are named as trabeculi carini, ala orbitalis, ala temporalis and else. But although as, as a level of undergraduate, these are not needed to be remembered, but you have to look that each piece of cartilage will ossify forming a bone, one of the separate skull bones. So we had finished now description of the brain box development and we said that the skull is formed of two parts, a neurocranium, which is a brain box, and this neurocranium is formed of cranial vault and base, and the second part is bones of the face. Bones of the face, which, is, which are called uh, viscerocranium, are formed by uh, uh, mesoderm of the so-called pharyngeal arches. Pharyngeal arches are defined as it's, this figure shows are tissue blocks, the pharyngeal arches, are mesodermal tissue blocks on the sides of the pharynx of the embryo. And this is a section into the pharynx showing the lumen of the pharynx and on the side of it are the tissue blocks of the pharyngeal pharynx. These mesodermal tissue blocks will form the bones of the face which are called viscerocranium and these uh, bones will be described in details with the embryology of the head and neck. Anomalies of the skulls are many. You may have an opening, for example, in the skull. The opening may be large, just like in this baby, an opening, a large opening in the cranial valve. And because of this large opening, cells in the amniotic fluid may engulf the brain, and so it will be uh, it will be a large opening in the cranial valve associated with degeneration of the brain a condition which is called anencephaly. Or there will be a small opening, that small opening may lead to herniation of the brain and meninges, which is called meningoencephalo seal. Or there will be only herniation of the meninges, and it is called meningo seal. This is the first anomaly opening in the skull, which is called the craniosciasis. The other abnormality is uh, the contrary to the opening, it is a closure. It is a closure of the sutures of the skull early during intrauterine life. 
premature closure. Thus, uh, it may result in abnormal shape of the skull. If, uh, for example, in this figure, uh, this is an ossification, a premature ossification of the sagittal suture, the head of the baby will become just like a boat and it's called scaphocephaly. If there is ossification of the coronal suture, the head will uh, raise above uh, and so it calls acrocephaly or tower the skull. And there is a one side abnormality of premature closure, uh, closure of the sagittal and coronal suture, but on one side it will result in that disturbed skull shape, which is called a plagiocephaly. So either it will be an opening, which is craniosclerosis, or closure, which is craniosynostosis. Sometimes the skull may be small, and it is too small, it may be associated with underdevelopment of the brain and mental retardation. That is all about the development of the brain, of the skull, sorry. And now we will describe the embryology of the limbs. The limbs, as you can see in this figure, develops uh, during the second uh, month as buds from the ventrolateral aspect of the trunk. And uh, actually the limb bud is one of the criteria that make you uh, knowing that this embryo is a two-month embryo because uh, the budding begins in the fourth week and it will continue in the second uh, month. This, uh, these buds are extensions from the somatic layer of lateral plate of mesoderm. So the core of them, the center of them is a mesoderm. And uh, these buds are covered by ectoderm from outside. Uh, what's going on if you take a, a histological section for this bud, you will find that the covering ectoderm at the tip of the bud shows a nipple-like thickening, which is called apical ectodermal ridge. This is it. It was found that this apical ectodermal ridge secretes certain substances to inside. And these substances secreted from the ectoderm of the apical ectodermal ridge, the thickening at the tip of the uh, limb bud, this substance will promote uh, or induce uh, the elongation and growth of the limb bud further and further. Because they found that if they cut this uh, limb bud, the uh, limb growth stops. And if they are transplanted to another region, the new region will form a limb bud. The general rule is that everything which is more anterior will develop uh, before anything which is more posterior. Therefore, the upper limb will precede the development of the lower limb uh, by about one to two days. So first we will have budding, which are filled with mesoderm, covered by ectoderm. But at the sixth week of development, you know the budding occurred in the fourth week, uh, the distal parts of the bud will be flattened. So there will be formation of hand plate and foot plate. And then after formation of the hand plate and foot plate, there will be constriction at the wrist, elbow, and shoulder to demarcate the arm and forearm parts of the limb. But later on, imagine that the apex of this uh, limb bud shows an apical ectodermal ridge. The apical ectodermal ridge here will induce substances, will secrete substances to inside, and these substances secreted from the apical ectodermal thickening or apical ectodermal ridge will promote or induce the inside to grow. So there will be a segmental death in the apical ectodermal ridge. This segmental death in the apical ectodermal ridge will stop growth of the mesoderm deep to this dead region. So the regions between the regional death will grow, but the regions of the death will not grow, and thus fingers and toes will be formed. So segmental cell death occur in the apical ectodermal ridge, resulting in formation or elongation of the digits, digits or uh, of the hands and foot, the uh, fingers and uh, toes. Also in the sixth week with constrictions that we had just uh, flattening of the hand plate and foot plate and constriction. Inside the limb bud, there will be a cartilaginous model of the bones. 
and these are high line cartilage model that will ossify later on at the 12 week at the seventh week the upper limb will rotate 90 degree laterally and the lower limb will rotate 90 degree medially therefore in consideration to rotation of the upper limb the radius was uh, anterior when it, the, the upper limb rotates the radius will become lateral and the lower limb was uh, the, the tibia was anterior and when the lower limb rotates medial it will uh, it will be uh, medial so the radius will deviate from anterior to lateral in the upper limb and the uh, tibia will deviate from anterior to medial in the lower limb with these rotations in a 90 degree uh, of rotation what's going on that during uh, embryonic life there will be uh, primary ossification centers in the cartilaginous model of the bone and so during uterine life the shaft of the bone is formed and the shaft of the bone is called diaphysis later on the upper end and lower end of the shaft of the bone will be formed after birth by uh, development of secondary ossification centers and therefore uh, during early stages the upper end and lower end of the shaft of the bone are covered by what's called epiphyses that are resulting from secondary cartilaginous joint forming the uh, upper end and lower end above and below the shoe. And there will be a piece of cartilage between the shaft and the epiphyses which is called epiphyseal plate. That piece of cartilage will continuously adding a new bone to the diaphysis and epiphyses. The diaphysis is the shaft and the epiphysis is the upper end. So in between them there will be a piece of cartilage which is called epiphyseal plate that will add more bone and uh, more ossification by cartilaginous ossification to both the epiphysis and diaphysis thus uh, the limb bones will be elongated further and further during uh, childhood anomalies of the limb are many sometimes the limbs are absent and it is called amelia sometimes uh, the limbs is short and is called meromelia and thus absence or short cords remind us with a drug which was used uh, in 1957 for a pregnant female which is called thalidomide uh, for vomiting in pregnancy and sedation and later on they found that uh, this drug produced either amelia or meromelia and so the drug stops in 1962 sometime uh, the limb is normal but it is very short uh, sometime you have more than one finger which is called polydactyly or there will be an absence of finger which is called the uh, ectrodactyly or sometimes the fingers are fused together which is called sandactyly and there is a quest which is called lobster claw which is uh, showed in the foot uh, or in the hand due to the absence of the third metacarpal bone or third metatarsal bone. Also, sometimes there will be a tear in the amniotic membrane for many reasons, for example, infection. This tear of the membrane will produce a band and the band will encircle the limb in the, of the fetus inside the body, inside the uterus. Because this band teared from the amniotic will encircle the limb, it will cut the blood supply and causing constriction that finally result to, into amputation by this amniotic band. Sometime when the baby comes with the breech presentation, the buttock is downward, not the head is downward, the baby will take an abnormal position inside the uterus and thus there will be a dislocation of the hip uh, after birth which is called congenital hip dislocation in which there will be endal development of the stablum in relation to the head of the femur during the breech delivery when the buttock is done. That's all about the development of the limb. Now we will consider developments of the uh, or embryogenesis of the vertebral column. I think that everybody know that the somites on the sides of the midline or we can say the somites are on the sides of the neural tube and ventral to the neural tube is the notochord and the midline. The somites differentiate later on into a ventromedial part which is called sclerotome that is loose tissue and a dorsolateral part which is dermomyotome forming the dermis of the skin 
and the muscles, the primordium of the muscles. So the development of the vertebral column is from the scleratum, the ventrolateral loose connective tissue derived from the mesoderm. This loose tissue of the scleratum will migrate medially and ventrally to surround the neural tube, which later on form the spinal cord and surround the notochord, and thus forming the body of the vertebra. And thus, uh, this migration occurs in the fourth week. So finally, you will find uh, sclerotomes around the notochord. This is in the middle of the notochord. And uh, there will be pieces of sclerotomes uh, around the notochord and around the neural tube. And uh, the tissue between subsequent sclerotome, this is a sclerotome of a somite, and that is another sclerotome of another somite. The tissue between each sclerotome of a somite and the next is called intersegmental tissue. Uh, these tissue are supplied by a branch from the aorta, which is called uh, intersegmental artery, visal or intersegmental artery. What's going on during development of the vertebral column? That the caudal part of the sclerotome of each somite will invade the intersegmental region to be fused with the cranial part of the sclerotome of the caudal somite to it. So, as you can see in the arrow, the sclerotome of this somite will invade the intersegmental region to fuse with the cranial part, the caudal part of this somite, fuse with the cranial part of this somite. And the fusion of this caudal sclerotome with this cranial sclerotome result as the figure into a body of the vertebra. Therefore, the position of the intervertebral disc between uh, the vertebrae will be in the middle of the sclerotum, as you can see. So this body of vertebra is formed by a cranial, uh, a, co a caudal sclerotum fused with the cranial, next sclerotum, caudal with the cranial, and resulting in a body of uh, vertebra. And you can see that this is the position of the intervertebral disc. It is at the middle of the sclerotum between the uh, uh, cranial and caudal and each body of the vertebra is formed by caudal invading the next cranial caudal invading the next cranial as it is shown in this figure therefore uh, this is the uh, structure of the uh, vertebra it is formed by sclerotome the notochord inside the sclerotome will form the center of body of vertebra which is called centrum of body of vertebra Regarding the intervertebral disc, the intervertebral disc therefore is formed of middle parts of the sclerotome of each somite, and uh, actually this sclerotome from the peripheral annular fibrosis of the intervertebral disc because the center of the intervertebral disc, which is a gelatinous substance called the nucleus pulposus, is derived from the notochord, just like the centrum of the body is derived from the notochord, the center of the intervertebral disc which is called the nucleus pulposus, is derived from the notochord, while the periphery of the intervertebral disc is derived from the sclerotome, which is a fibrous tissue. And you can see, therefore, the intersegmental branch of the aorta is at the middle of the vertebra, because uh, its position indicates the junction of this sclerotome of this somite, which is the caudal uh, part of the sclerotome of the somites above, with the cranial sclerotome of the somites next to it. And this is the explanation to what I had just described. Developments of the ribs and the sternum. Actually, in regard to the ribs, the ribs uh, grow from uh, the body of the vertebra. You know, the body of the vertebra is from the sclerotome, except the center of the body, which is the centrum from the notochord. But the sclerotome of the body form a process called costal process, which is also shown here. This costal process elongate to form the ribs and the thoracic vertebra only. You know, other vertebrae, they don't have um, ribs, only the thoracic vertebra shows development of the rib from the costal process, the cervical vertebrae, lumbar vertebrae, and uh, 
sacral vertebrae have an embryonic prodium, uh, primordium which is drawn in red color of the costal process, but the costal process in the cervical vertebrae, lumbar and sacral will not elongate just like the costal process of the thoracic vertebrae and thus the costal process of the thoracic vertebrae uh, will form the ribs. And in summary, the, co the ribs are derived from the sclerotum because the ribs are processes from the body of the vertebra and the body is from the sclerotum. And uh, the sternum uh, are derived from the somatic layer of lateral plate of mesoderm. You can see in this figure that the somatic layer of lateral plate of mesoderm is folded to form the ventral body wall. And because of this folding, the, the, the interior part of the somatic uh, layer of lateral plate of mesoderm will form here uh, the sternum. Anomalies of the vertebrae are uh, uh, including fusion of the body of the vertebrae, as this figure shows, or maybe there will be a half vertebra just like this. This half vertebra will, let, will result in deviation of a vertebral column, a condition which is called scoliosis. In addition to that, we may have abnormal number of vertebrae, as in this case, which is called Klippelfield syndrome. Klippelfield syndrome or there will be absence of the arch of the vertebra as this figure and uh, this is called spina bifida it will be considered with the embryology of the nervous system thank you very much